Hello and welcome to the OTB channel. So today I'm going to repeat something that I did 12 months or more ago where I looked at how to create a multi-boot USB uh, stick in Linux. That seemed to be a very popular video, but the program I was using has had a few issues and so I stopped using it quite some time ago. But there's a new kid on the block called Ventu, which seems to be getting a lot of love. So I thought I'd give this a go, set it up, see if it works, and also see if I could set it up in a way that I could test it in VirtualBox. Not straightforward at all, but relatively easy once it's done. So let's see what Ventu's all about. See you after the intro. Right, welcome back. Um, so, a multi-boot USB stick. I tried this before. I'm just bringing up Firefox to look at my, my old video. And it was back in January 2020, January the 4th, 2020, so more than a year ago. And I looked at something called multi-boot USB. And I managed to set up a USB stick with... Lots of different ISOs on it, which can be incredibly useful if you're continually booting into different operating systems for testing purposes, or you're constantly installing new ISOs onto, onto your computers. Um, for me, it was a bit of a godsend because, um, well, I've got lots of laptops and I, I'm constantly testing new new ISOs. But if you want to carry a toolkit around with you, for fixing Windows or Linux, if you want something like uh, Parted Magic on it, it can be really useful. Now, I didn't, I must admit, I, I came across a few issues with the multi-boot USB program. And uh, after the first few weeks, I, I didn't really go back to it. And I've noticed that it, it, the link to, to that program now seems to have disappeared. However, um, what has generated quite a lot of love recently is a program called Ventu, which also allows you to create a multi-boot ISO. And looking at the reviews, and I've been reading quite a few, they seem to suggest that it's pretty seamless the way that this works. And and it seems to work with Linux or Windows or whatever operating system you've you've got. Although I, I don't think it works in Mac. I may be wrong, but we'll have a look in a minute. Um, so so I'm going to set up everything on my Arch system here whilst I'm making the video. So I haven't haven't looked at it yet. I really haven't. So I'm going to install it as is, and, and we'll see if it does what it's meant to do. I'm then going to uh, use my little X260 as a means of testing it to see if it actually works on real hardware. But ideally what I want to do as well is I want to find a way of testing it within VirtualBox because showing you the testing process on real hardware and having to use a capture card and, and link everything up uh, to to uh, to show you the video, it's, it's quite messy, really. So um, I've been doing some searching, and I found some ways that you can actually test a multi-boot USB stick by booting it within a virtual box environment. So we're going to be going through that as well. But let's go to the split screen before we start, and let's look at Ventu. Right, so uh, you should see the Ventu website uh, up there now, Ventoy, 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 I'm, I think I'm pronouncing it correctly. Um, and we're going to have a quick look at this. What I would say before we start, if you're going to use a USB stick and you're booting uh, an ISO from a USB stick, 
the type of USB stick that you buy is going to make a huge difference. And all USB sticks are not created equally. Some are much faster than others. And I bought myself um, a USB 3.1 stick. It's a, a SanDisk Extreme Go USB 3.1. I don't know if that's going to, to show there. It's quite lightweight. Um the good thing about it is it's very fast and it's not that expensive. And for something like a multi-boot USB stick, you do want something that has a bit of warmth behind it. So let me just put that down there. So here's the Ventu, Ven, Ventoy uh, multi-boot uh, program page. It's an open source tool uh, created to boot a whole range of image files. ISOs, of course, but WIM files, IMG files, VHD files, and EFI files. So, great. And you don't need to format the disk over and over. Once you've installed it once, you just stick it into your, uh, your computer. The folder for uh, the USB stick should open up and you just drop the ISO files on it. So you can update it really easily. Stick it back in the computer, drop another ISO on it, delete an ISO, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so pretty good. Um, apparently it will work in uh, standard BIOS mode or UEFI, uh, and you don't need to worry about the format of your USB stick at the moment because it has a script that you'll run and when you run the script, it, it will reformat the stick itself, you know, completely. So no problem. So it's 100% open source, which is a real bonus because many of these sort of solutions tend to be quite proprietary. And it has a whole range of features. Wow. Okay, so impressive. What I don't think it does do though I, if i remember from the multi boot usb program i used last time you could actually bring it up and, and test do a test boot uh, uh, as part of the program itself i don't think you can do that with ventoy i might be wrong but this is why i'm looking at perhaps looking at virtualbox as well so this, let's have a look at a screenshot and what it should look like and you can see it looks like that and all you have to do is drop an ISO file onto your USB stick. And when you next boot with the USB stick, it will show all the ISOs that are there. What downloads are available? Um, well, you need to go to GitLub, GitHub, according to this. Um, so there are binary files. There's a Windows zip file. There's a Linux tarball. And there's a live CD ISO. Um, a live CD ISO, I suppose that's just for testing purposes. What I wanted, though, was the tarball. What I found really interesting was they've done a huge amount of testing here. So if you move over to the testing ISO menu there, uh, you will see, in terms of Linux, wow, wow they've gone through a whole range of testing. And you can look at things like Debian and just click there. And there's all the different ones that have been tested and it tells you whether it will boot in legacy or UEFI. They've been doing the testing in their Kimu, which is fine. So yeah, what I did then, I downloaded the tarball, I extracted it, and we're now going to install it. So let's see how this works. I've not tried this before, so I'm doing it as I record it. So uh, it may work, it may not work. So it'll be interesting. Uh, you can see the terminal here on my desktop. I've downloaded Ventoy, it came down as a tarball. Uh, I extracted the tarball and I've created a directory just called Ventoy. Uh, it create or, or contains a number of files, as you can see, and there's a script there called Ventoy to disk, 
which I've got to run as root. And I've got to point it towards my USB drive. So the USB drive is plugged in, but I need to know what its name is. So let me just run LSBLK um, and have a look. Now, I know that the NVMe drive is the internal hard drive or internal SSD. So it's going to be SDA. It's got a few different partitions on SDA at the moment. In fact, I've been playing around with Windows to go, so that's what it's actually got on. I'm not going to bother too much about uh, uh, changing or deleting those partitions. I'm just going to run the script and uh, see if it works. Um, so let's let's do it. So sudo sh toy to disk. I want to do an I, and I want to put dev SDA, which is my uh, my uh, little uh, USB flash drive. So let's hit enter after entering my password. So it's recognized uh, the USB disk. It's SanDisk Extreme, 58 gigs, it's saying. It's a 64 on on the usb stick itself but i'm going to in, uh, install it onto that all data will be destroyed do i want to continue well let's press yes again it's going to be lost do i want to continue so that's nice and safe i like that and it's now creating partitions so we'll see what it does well that was pretty quick i have to say Okay, so if I do LSBLK now, what does it come up with? Right, so it looks like it's created two partitions there. Let's just do a sudo fdisk-l. And uh, right, okay. So looking at SDA, it appears that we now have an EFI partition of 32 megs and 58.4 gigs, and I believe that is an XFAT partition. So that was all fairly painless. Right, so uh, that's uh, Ventoy installed, pretty straightforward. And in theory, what I can do now is I just insert the USB stick, it should open up, and I just drop any ISO files that I want onto the USB stick. So that's what I've done. I've had a few lying about. Let's just go and have a look. You can see here uh, my file manager, uh, PC Man FM, and I had six different ISO files uh, lying around. So I've got Reborn OS there from when I reviewed it uh, the other week. I've also got an ISO of Fossa Pup there. I've got Obviously, an Arch Linux ISO, which I tend to keep around anyway. I've got uh, the standard Ubuntu desktop uh, ISO. Um, thinking of doing something with that. I, I, I need to have a look at that at some point. I've got Endeavor there, which is uh, my go-to ISO if I want to do anything. And I've also got a Windows ISO because I want to see if it boots Windows ISOs as much as it'll boot any Linux ISO. So how am I going to do this? Right, well, one of the, the problems when you're creating a video about something like a, a, a multi-boot USB, I would generally use VirtualBox, but VirtualBox will not boot from a USB stick, or it won't boot from a USB stick without doing a number of things, which I'm going to show you how to do afterwards. So we're stuck with uh, the standard way of doing it by sticking the USB stick into a laptop, booting it, and uh, seeing what happens. Um, now, I do want to try and show this um, within OBS, and I don't want it to just be some horrible video taken on my phone. So I'm going to have a go with something I've just bought, which is uh, an HDMI capture card. Now, I have a fancy capture card uh, that I'm using with my camera, but this is just a, a generic 
25 quid capture card that I picked up from Amazon. So I'm going to hook this up, stick a, a HDMI cable in this, hook it up to my computer, and we'll see if it works. So it's, run, it's going to run on the X260, and I'm going to have a go with Endeavor and see if Endeavor boots. So the problem that I have with uh, what I'm doing now is I have my uh, X260 ThinkPad hooked up to uh, via this little uh, interface to try and show you uh, Ventoy booting on it with the Re Reborn OS ISO. And as you can see at the moment, uh, in the early stages of booting, it doesn't actually show up through the capture card but it's just started to play now and i got a menu up and it seems to be booting okay and uh, so far so good and let's just see what happened um and here we are yeah and, and there's the reborn os gnome screen and i'm interacting with this on real hardware strange that uh I'm actually, uh, as I say, I've got it on the X260, and I'm, I've got it hooked up to a capture card, and I'm trying to show you the capture card on uh, oh, through OBS, but I'm bringing up the menu now, and it's just, it's not showing up, strangely enough. I don't quite know why that is. Oh, yes, I do. Of course, I know why it is. It will be because rather than mirroring the display it will probably be uh, attempting to uh, extend the display. So let's have a look at displays and see what it's actually doing. Um, I'm looking on another screen at the moment. And uh, let me just have a look. Yeah, I want to mirror the display and apply. Keep those changes. Right, okay, so now you should see it. There you go. So... It worked all good. You couldn't see the menu initially by using this capture card, but clearly it worked. But having to continually reboot a real machine to see if an ISO works is a bit of a pain. What I would really like to do is to have some way of doing it within VirtualBox where I could test it properly to see if an ISO works before I take it away confident that it's going to actually work on a real PC. Okay, so, so far, so good. But when you're creating a video like this, having to use uh, real hardware and having to keep rebooting it and using a capture card is not convenient. So it would be really good if I could somehow use VirtualBox just to test to see if all the different ISOs that I'm using would actually work in Ventoy. So I know that a USB stick won't generally boot uh, in VirtualBox, but I did a little bit of a Google search, and uh, I've managed to successfully get something set up. And I'm going to show you the link that I followed, but I want to perhaps say a warning to start off with. What you have to do in order to get this to work is you have to add your user to the disk group. Now, that is really dangerous, and it's not something that you would want to have there as a permanent thing. So by all means, add your user to the disk group in order to test uh, this process and make sure that your Ventoy drive is working. But then once you finish doing the testing, remove your user from the group, please. Otherwise, you're going to have user access to raw disks and you could cause all sorts of chaos. So let's just go to the split screen and I'll show you what I've actually done. Okay, so uh, you should see um, in front of you now, I've uh, got the website up where I found an article on how to boot a USB stick from uh, VirtualBox and it's on ostechnics.com, and what I'll do is I'll link this particular article in the video description so that you can use it if you want. And essentially what you have to do is you have to create a virtual disk 
that points to your USB drive. So you're going to create a, a VMDK file. And the way you do this is pretty simple. Plug in your USB drive, so you make sure you know what it's called, dev SDA, SDB, or whatever. Uh, once you've done that, you issue as sudo a vbox manage command in the terminal, and you point that command towards the USB drive. And what it actually does is it creates a, a VMDK virtual disk. So that's great. Um, once you've done that, you then have to make sure that the disk, you have permission to access that disk. So you're going to do a sudo chone, user, user, whatever the virtual drive is called. And you're then going to make sure that you add yourself to the VBox users group. And if you're already a virtual box user, you're probably there already. But the thing that makes the difference here is you have to also add yourself to the disk group. Now, this is dangerous, as I've just said. So it's fine doing it on a temporary basis, but make sure that you remove yourself from the disk group once you finish testing. Um, I tried to get this to work without adding myself to the disk group, and I'm afraid it was no good. Every time I tried to attach that virtual disk to VirtualBox, it wouldn't allow me to. So I had to do it. So I went through this process. I set everything up in VirtualBox. I've played around with it a little bit, and it does seem to work, but I'll show you now what my settings are so that you can play as well. Right, so we're over on uh, my screen again, and you can see VirtualBox open there. I've created um, a virtual machine called USB Boot, and for the options, I wasn't quite sure what, what to use, given that I'm going to be booting Linux, but I've also got a Windows ISO there. But what I decided to go for was I set it up as a Linux system, and I selected other Linux, 64-bit as the operating system. It's got 8-gig uh, of memory, 16-meg um, video memory, and I'm using the VBOX SVGA graphics controller. Okay, if I go into settings, you'll see what I've actually done on the storage section. I've actually pointed the controller to this USB boot disk, the virtual drive that I created with those commands. So when you set up a new virtual machine in VirtualBox and it asks you, do you want to create a virtual disk or do you want to use an existing one? You're gonna choose, I want to use an existing one and point it to wherever you've saved that. So all good. So, I know this works, I've been playing with it, so let me just hit start. And there we are, it's starting off. And you can see there, we now have the VirtualBox interface, sorry, the Ventoy interface. And you can see all the different ISOs there. So we've got Arch Linux, Endeavor OS, Fossa Pop, Reborn, which we know works because we've already used it. Uh, Ubuntu and there's Windows 10. So if I was to just go through this process, let's start with Arch. It's booted straight away to the Grub screen and it seems to be working. I'm not going to worry too much about getting the correct resolution on this. It's just a test to make sure that everything works. And uh, we seem to be going through the right process and... Arch seems to be booting. And so far, so good. Oh, lovely. We had a start job. That always takes time. And it should boot straight to a root prompt as normal. And indeed it has. Okay, so all good. Let's reboot this. What about Endeavor OS? No, I mean, we know that's going to work. Uh, let's try something different like Fossapop. 
I'm going to do a review on Fossil Pop at some point. Um, right. Oh, I've never actually looked at this. So what are we going to do? Copy. Oh, okay. It started booting. We'll just let it boot and see what happens here. So it's waiting for USB storage. Ah, right. Uh, I believe... Uh, Puppy Linux does look for USB storage where it can save its settings, so that's fine. Let's see if this works. And there we have it. Okay, current resolution 1680 by 983. That's a strange one, but uh, okay. Fossa Pup has booted so let's reboot i'm just gonna click ok on that changes applied successfully apparently how do we get out of this well presumably we just hit exit and then let's reboot i don't want to save the session i'm really pleased this has worked it's a handy way of testing something like this so uh we've looked at reborn Let's, we know it can boot uh, Arch-based systems. Let's try and see if it'll do Ubuntu. And after we've done this, I suppose the big test will be, I'll just cancel that. The big test will be to see if uh, it will actually boot Windows. Right, so we've booted into the Ubuntu welcome screen. Let's just hit try Ubuntu. As I say, I've got eight gigs of RAM on this, so uh, it should be more than enough. And with a USB 3.1 drive, it should be relatively fast as well. I know that when I was playing about with the Windows to go stuff, I needed a, a one of the 3.1 drives to make it even usable. Okay, so Ubuntu works. Let's reboot, and let's now do the big test. Let's see if Windows will boot. I'm not sure whether or not it will, but now we'll find out, that's for sure. So, I've got this set up as other Linux, so um, I don't know what difference that's actually going to make, but let's hit Enter and see. Oh, it seems to be booting the Windows 10 uh, installation ISO. Will it get to the next stage? Okay, well, the proof is in the pudding, and the pudding seems to suggest that this works without a problem. So, all good. Right, so I think we, we can definitely say that was a success. Um... I do need to say, though, after testing, don't forget that you need to re remove your user from the disk group. And if I just go back to my screen, I'll show you how you do that. You'll see uh, over here, I've got my terminal again. I've just run this, actually. Uh, you can use G password. Uh, so you would just issue sudo G password minus D, followed by your username, followed by the group, that you want to remove yourself from. I've just run this. It will remove you from the disk group. If you then log out and log back in, all will be back to normal. If you want to test um, your USB stick again in VirtualBox, you will need to re-add yourself to that group. Right, so Ventoy, it seems to work well. Will I use it? I think I definitely will. Um, it, it's been a year since I'd played with multi-boot USBs, and I'll admit that the, the program I was using last time, although it seemed to work fine when I was creating the video, in practical terms, I did occasionally have a few issues getting certain ISOs to boot, and so it sort of fell by the wayside, and I stopped using it. But I've been playing around with this um, actually on my X260 to make sure that all of those different ISOs do boot. 
and so far everything that I've tried has worked um it's booted whether I set up my laptop to boot uh, in UEFI mode or or to boot in standard uh, DOS mode it all seems okay so so far so good I've heard good things about Ventoy and and from my own tests well it seems to back everything up so a great little tool to have and something for the if, if you're going to use lots of different ISOs and you've got a number of different machines, it's handy for me to have bootable ISOs just on the one stick and I don't have to keep burning them to USB all the time. I can just drop them on the drive. So a recommendation. It seems a very good program. Right, guys, so that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed this. A little bit different. Uh, don't forget to join me on Facebook. Uh, come and see me on library and just finishing off i would as normal like to thank all of my patrons so that's robert boudreau gary moore corbinian aristotelis Stormpix, stephen cross mike long dave bird entropy uk richard wade tiger philip sb forrest patrick glenn and magnus thank you guys your help is really appreciated so that's it for today, and I'll see you next week.